this is episode two. In this episode, we're going to look at the physical body. So how the physical body um, manifests issues that aren't just physical issues, how muscles can link to emotions and vice versa. And we can start to look at how we can get the balance within that body. So when we think of having a healthy body, we like to think of ourselves as being injury-free, illness-free and pain-free. And we're constantly bombarded in the media with images about how we should look if we're healthy, um, trying to sell us products for a healthy gut, healthy gut equals healthy you, things that you can put on your face that makes you um, look younger, feel younger, but actually it's a lot more complex than that. Our body is a system and that system is made up of different systems and we need all of those systems to be functioning effectively for the body to be healthy, for us to achieve well-being and for us to look and feel younger. So we'll start right with the basics. There are four basic reasons for pain. The first one is a trauma, so an injury, a whiplash injury, a sporting injury, something that's very, very easy to understand. You go over on your ankle, you hurt your ankle, you have pain in your ankle. The second is environmental. Um, we spend a lot of our time in daily living just sitting down. That obviously has massive impact on muscles, muscles that aren't designed to be sitting a lot of the time. Chairs are the worst invention ever um, for, for keeping us healthy. Um, so situations like that that we're in every day can cause us pain and discomfort on a regular basis. The third one is emotional. Um, so quite often you see people um, if you've got a difficult day, if you have an exam, if you have a driving test, the stomach clenches and you have stomach pains or the shoulders go up and you start having um, sore neck, sore shoulder muscles. That causes pain, that causes tension in the muscles. So that's the third element, the emotional, the obvious emotional link to the muscles. We'll have a look a little bit in detail in this episode more around individual muscles and how they link to individual emotions. Um, but that's kind of the basic the basic precept. The fourth one is how we're taught to deal with emotions in terms of the social conditioning we have. So we're taught that children cry, adults don't cry. We're taught that men don't cry. So we hold those emotions in and the longer you hold emotions in, the more the impact is physical. So that's the fourth, the more kind of spiritual element to the pain. That's when the um, external elements come into play. And again, we'll go into more detail in that in the episode. So physical pain is probably the easiest thing to address. People feel more comfortable in general going to a doctor saying, I have a sore shoulder. The doctor will look at the shoulder, assess the pain. It's one of the more common things that I see people coming to me for is the physical pain because the pain manifests itself. Physical pain is what stops you doing your day-to-day -day duties, your day-to-day -day life. Um, and people get to the point where it's impacting. They can't take it anymore. So they go to a doctor or they go to a massage therapist to seek help for the physical pain. So in normal, normal life, um, you have a sore shoulder, you go to the doctor to see the shoulder. The doctor will look at the shoulder, will examine the shoulder, probably tell you to maybe rest it, give you a couple of basic exercises to do, maybe painkillers if it's really bad, ask you to come back in a few weeks if it's no better. You go and see the doctor about the shoulder, it gets worse, the doctor will then refer you to a specialist for the shoulder. Very, very unlikely that at any point they will look at anything else that's connected. But in my world, in this fantastic world of holistic therapies, the shoulder muscles are linked to the abdominal muscles. So it could well be that the shoulder, again, is linked to stress. It's linked to anxiety. So you're tensing up, your shoulder's tensing up. As we know from, from physiotherapy and from the Western techniques that we use, muscles tense up to protect injury. So if you get a slight tension here and you, that you don't address, the muscles will then tense up and tense up and tense up. And it's like a ripple effect, which will eventually cause a frozen, a frozen shoulder or, or will um, go into the neck, so you start having neck problems. Now, like I say, the doctor will look at all of that, will just think you've got a bad shoulder and send you to a shoulder specialist. That shoulder might improve, you might go and see a physio, it might get better for three months, six months, but unless you look at the underlying anxiety or whatever else is causing that shoulder pain, that is just going to keep coming back. It's going to keep, re it's going to keep reoccurring until you get to the underlying cause and address that underlying cause. So another thing I come across all the time is people saying, oh, I've got a bad knee, I've got a bad stomach, I keep getting headaches. Um, they go and see the doctor, the doctor does tests, there's nothing wrong, so they come out with the generic, oh, it's just an age thing, it's just because you're getting old. No. When I was training, um, the guy who, who trained us um, in one of the therapies, um, actually said to me, never ever let anybody go away believing that it's an age thing. Because if it was an age thing, everybody who hit, say, 66 would have exactly the same issue. 
it's never an age thing. There's always something that's causing it. It could be an age thing in that you've lived with something for 20, 30, 40 years. I see people on a day-to-day -day basis who had car crashes in their early 20s. They're now in their 50s. And the impact from that car crash that long ago is impacting on their well-being because it was a neck pain that suddenly materialised in the lower back. When I say suddenly, we're talking like 15 years. That then causes hip problems. That then causes digestive problems. So they come to me, by the time they come to me, they're having migraines, their bowel movements are irregular. They're having so many issues just as a result of a car crash all those years ago. So it's nothing to do with age as in a number. If anything, it's just to do with the fact that people are living with symptoms for so long that it's manifesting as something much worse eventually. As a therapist, I work with my clients and my colleagues work with their clients to address the root cause of any pain. We never ever assume that the pain that somebody is experiencing in the body is where the root cause is because more often than not it isn't. It could be a physical thing, so it could be a whiplash injury, it could be from that first trauma cause of pain. Um, but in which case we need to identify that and treat the root cause. So if it's a neck injury that's hurting the shoulder, we need to look at that neck pain as well as the shoulder. It could be from an emotional situation as well. So it could be the anxiety. It could be um, tension caused by worry and fear. So we need to address that. It could be situational. It could be because that person has been sitting at a desk for too many years. So he's always sort of sat typing at a keyboard or um, lots of, we see lots of construction industry workers who spent a long time carrying bricks or electricians with their hands in the air. So again, it can be situational, but until you look at that holistic picture of somebody, somebody's lifestyle, um, carry out tests, carry out muscle tests on them to identify that root cause, those issues are still gonna keep repeating, repeating, recurring, recurring until you address that, that um, basic root cause of the injury and the pain. There's several different ways you can look at um, the holistic picture of somebody's life. So people like core therapists, bone therapy, things like that will take into account different areas of the body. So whenever you go and see a therapist, an alternative therapist, um, you will ask to be, or you should be asked to complete a lifestyle questionnaire um, that looks at people's lives, that looks at the situations they're in, their stress levels, what makes them anxious, whether they have any fear, and the therapist should be talking to you about all of that as they're going through the treatments. Um, yeah, there's different ways of identifying the root cause. So one of the things that I do, um, my, one of my qualifications is core therapy, and we use a kinesthetic muscle testing mechanism to look at what muscles aren't functioning in the system. So that could be, again, we can test for whiplash, we can test for individual muscles, we can test for the system itself. So if it's the system that's just weakening, we can test for that. And there's different ways we can go about doing that. So first of all, I'll look at some key muscles just to see whether they're all firing. Um, a strong muscle will hold. Um, you can put pressure on it and it will hold in place. A weak muscle or a failing muscle will drop. So for example, if you take the arm, if you use the arm, a strong muscle in the arm, if your muscles in the arm are strong, the arm will stay strong when you push it down. If, there's a, if, if it's failing, um, then it will give doesn't have to be necessarily a dramatic give, it could just be a wobble. Um, a lot of that again depends on how physically strong the person that you're testing is. So you could have, I've had bodybuilders in the past where obviously their muscles are very, very well defined, their strength is enormous. Um, so you try and find a weak muscle and actually their other muscles kick in to hold that muscle. So it's all about identifying the muscle properly and identifying the weakness properly. It's not a strength test, it's about functionality. You can test the quads. The quads are a major muscle, both in movement, but also in terms of emotional, um, sort of emotional health as well. So if you want to test a quad, you basically put the body in the formation to test the quad and you test the quad. What you can also do once you've found a strong muscle, so for example, if this muscle holds really, really strong and then you put the body in a situation, in a stress situation, that muscle will fail and you can use that with anything. So for example, if somebody has a shoulder pain, if we go and use the shoulder pain as an example again, if the pain in the shoulder is too much that you can't actually test the individual muscle by moving the arm of the shoulder that's, that's sore, you can use the other arm, find the strong muscle and then simply press on the origin or the insertion or really probably any part of the muscle that you want to test and retest the strong muscle. What will happen there, that strong muscle, if there is an issue with the muscle that you're testing in the shoulder, will fail. So you can use that for anything. Um, we do food intolerance tests this way. So you can get um, 
a, a, an element of food or anything that somebody is intolerant to. And as soon as the body thinks they're going to eat that food, a strong muscle will fail because it sends all of the energy to the stomach to prepare the stomach for the food that it's about to take. The body isn't great at multitasking, so it leaves no integrity left in the muscle. All the blood, all the energy has gone to the stomach, so that muscle will fail. Um, you can even test people for lying, which, <laughs> which is ace. You can do it on memories, so if you ask somebody to, to think about their most painful childhood memory, the muscle will fail. You can ask the body a question, um, and you can use the muscle response to determine whether that person is experiencing emotional or energetic imbalances as well. So you can see again how the energetic, how the spiritual um, impacts on the physical. So as an example of that, I had a recent client who was really struggling in a run-up to her wedding. Um, she couldn't understand, she was happy, everything was going really well, but she was really, really struggling with her stomach. We'd done the food intolerance, we'd done the general stress levels, everything was fine. Her sleep patterns weren't great either. So what we decided to do, we'd exhausted every, um, every other alternative we'd looked at, um, everything that we thought it could be. She was getting better, but it kept coming back. So we started to look at things that had happened in her childhood. So we used this kinesthetic muscle testing. I asked her to recount the memory that she was thinking about when she was struggling to sleep. What was it that was going round in her mind? What was it that was worrying her? So she said, oh yeah, I think I know what it is. I tested the muscle and she was fine. But then she said, oh, it could, it could be memory B. So she started thinking about memory B. We tested the muscle, the muscle was weak. So it was that memory that was impacting on everything. Um, and I'll go into the treatments and things that you can use to look at it, but just by identifying that memory, she's now fine, she doesn't have migraines anymore, her stomach's completely sorted, and she's all set to get married later this month. So it's, that again just shows how the, um, the impact of a memory, how the, the spiritual baggage, if you like, is impacting on her today in a physical way. Um, the body is amazing at making emotions into physical pain. So if you ignore an emotion, if you ignore a memory, if you don't deal with a pain in your mind for so long, then it will make it into a physical pain. So you can't ignore it anymore. There is a recognition in Western medicine of um, something that we call deferred pain. So you could present to the doctor or the physiotherapist with back pain, shoulder pain and hip pain. And there is a recognition that they all link. What tends to happen in that situation is that um, the specialist will look at the pain, the areas of pain, but again, there's a reluctance to look at anything outside that. So again, could be pain that's coming from elsewhere, from an injury that isn't actually, from an original trauma that isn't actually um, experiencing any pain, or it could be from an emotional element. And that's the bit that's missing in our Western medicine, but it doesn't stop there. So um, I'm gonna talk you through and give a few examples of how different muscles link to different organs. Um, we know from the Chinese system that we've looked at briefly how different organs link to different emotions. So for example, we have, we already mentioned the quads. Um, so the quads muscle, the quad muscles are big muscles in the leg. Um, a lot of explosive energy comes from there when you're doing sports, so things like hockey, weightlifting, a lot of emphasis is put on the quads. The quads should be rock solid. When you test the quads, they should not move at all. They should be there um, functioning brilliantly. So in many therapies there's a recognised technique called the Lubbock brother relationship. The Lubbock brother relationship um, looks at how different vertebrae are linked. So if you have an, uh, um, a, an injury or a pain at C1 at the top of your spine that will manifest also in the bottom of your spine and the relationship between the vertebrae is laid out in what's called this Lubbock brother relationship. That's a recognised technique in, in Western medicine. So the spine is a really obvious one because you can see the connections, you can see that it's linked but it doesn't stop there. Each muscle is linked to each vertebrae, is linked to each bone, is linked to um, each other muscle through a system of other muscles, soft tissue, blood vessels, and of course the energy channels that we'll look at. Everything is interlinked and interconnected. So it doesn't stop just with the physical link of the spine. You can see how everything in the body is, is, is linked. So the quads, we've mentioned the quads previously, the quads are really, really strong muscles, a lot of explosive energy in the quads, and they are essential to even just something as simple as walking. The quads are linked to the small intestine. So the small intestine itself, obviously, it plays a massive part in our general well-being. If issues, if pain, if, if stagnation is stored within the small intestine, then that's when you get digestive issues. You develop food intolerances, you get diarrhea, you get constipation, you get just a general sluggishness. If that then goes on as well, 
um, in, through the Chinese medicine we see that the small intestine is linked to the heart organ. So that manifests in terms of joy. If these issues are left undetected, if you don't get to the root cause of these, then that will again manifest further down the line. So you'll become um, unjoyous, you'll get sad. Um, the heart then has a direct relationship with the tongue. So it will manifest on the tongue. The Chinese place a lot of um, importance in tongue health in terms of diagnosing where somebody is, is ill. Like I say, the, if the issues with the, the small intestine go undetected, it then shows in the tongue and the lips because of the interconnectivity of the elements. So you can see how over time, a simple issue with one muscle will impact on the stomach, the skin, and your general well-being. Because if you're developing food intolerance as well, that then impacts on your day-to-day -day living, what you can eat, what you can't eat. So you can see how just from one simple injury, which could, could come from a trauma, it could be that you're playing football and you're on the ground and somebody stamps on your leg. Something that, that happened so innocently, so easily, from that first simple um, origin of the pain over years can impact massively through the system. A really good example of the interconnectivity of the systems and the muscles is when you throw up. So um, when you throw up, your stomach muscles contract, your abdominal muscles contract to push the food up towards the esophagus. Your shoulders rise, which opens up the esophagus, which lets the food come through. So you can see how all the different muscles are interconnected, how they're working together as a system to make something happen. That's just a good example of how things that we wouldn't really think are linked can actually have massive impact on each other. So taking it the converse way around as well, if you have a shoulder pain that's linked to your abdominals, if you're holding your shoulder tenderly because your shoulder isn't working, your abdominal muscles won't be working properly, which could impact on your breath. So your breath might be shorter than normal, you might be taking short breaths, which again could put your body into fight or flight, which we'll look at in the next episode.